we'll transition to creating that change. You mentioned the system being broken. Um, and you're an individual. Now you represent both men and women in family court. And yeah. we've had the opportunity to talk about some of the horrific things that that you've seen, you've dealt with, that you've had to work through with your clients. Um, but you've also been inside the political machine, both on the lobbying front and actually working for senators. So I, I think uh, yesterday during our conversation, you made a really, really strong point. I think the U.S. Census, I think, was where the data came from. Right. But it's something like 78% of custodial parents are women. Um, but another statistic is there are 14% of the instances where parents are separated from their children. It's women. And a lot of times we look at this, we're on this page, the father's rights movement. And obviously men tend to be at an eight to nine to one gap, be the one that's targeted and impacted by this. But 14% of the time it is women. So can you talk a little bit about your experience yeah. in terms of coalition building and what that means and how we can effectively move things yeah. forward? And, and I'm just going to tell my own story of my own evolution because I, I have a year, a year and a half ago, I probably would never believe how my own sort of journey, I got to be to where I am, where about half my clients are women. And uh, I love them equally. Uh, I mean, they're they're all great people. My, I, it, I I don't have any problem uh, representing women because most of most of the women that I represent are targeted by narcissistic borderline men, particularly narcissistic. And and it, it, what when we come into this and we're, we're we're fresh. I mean, we all remember your first court date, your your first experiences. You know how much cases are formulated, the trajectory of a case is formulated by what happens in the very beginning, the very first few court dates. So we've all been through this. We've all been traumatized. We've all looked around and say, you know what? You know, here we go again. This is this is the war on men. This is, you know, in Illinois, 1972, Stanley versus Illinois, famous US Supreme Court case, men didn't have any rights at all. If you, if you were not married and, you, and your wife became incapacitated, your kid went up to adoption without a hearing. Okay. So father's rights is real. Okay. The, the, there are so many problems, including that, that some people in Illinois put on the father's rights hat, but in fact, they're just like everybody else. That's not the case with the people in our reform movement, you know, so there, there's all kinds of little problems, but what I, what, what I, when I started experiencing this discrimination, and it was discrimination, I, I very much looked at it as a gender divide. It was, this is men versus women. This is the gender wars. And there's certainly truth to that. But the, but the broader pattern, at least in Illinois, is that we've got a bigger corruption problem. Uh, is that our, you know, in Illinois, we have a situation where all guardian ad litems are required to be attorneys. And, and I, I've talked to, um, PhD psychologists that won't even talk to these people. I mean, despise them where, you know, I, I, I try to connect them and they're like, I won't even speak to them. And, and then we start to, we start to get a broader picture that, wait a second, the, 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 who's captured in this is much more indiscriminate that in fact, they aren't going after fathers. They're going after situations that will cause them to get the most money. They don't really care who you are. They don't care what gender you are. Uh, sometimes men win, sometimes men lose. Uh, and, and you know, there, there isn't a really coherent uh, pattern. It's, it's just scattered and nonsense. So the longer I got into this, I started, we started to deal with women that were reporting similar things and, and who were fit women, nurses, doctors, you name it, experiencing the same of uh, pathological behavior where they're getting erased. Can I hop in on this? We, we yeah, have, have we we have there there's been a very public instance of this involving in St. Louis County. Um, yeah. K Kenneth Rose has been very public about his mm -hmm. battle with the guardian ad litem. Well, the first case that got thrown out against this guardian ad litem was a female attorney. Mm -hmm. So it, it can be indiscriminate. 
I, my, my piece on, on a lot of these neutral third parties, a guardian ad litem, you and I, in theory, don't have the technical training to know, to be able to understand the psychology, the sociology, the things right. that need to go into the decisions that are made. So this is a lot of times the judge passing the buck off to someone else who isn't necessarily trained to make those decisions. Right. Well, the, these attorneys are, are garbage and, and uh, they're actually, believe it or not, they're under investigation right now. I'm not going to say by who you can guess, um, but, but they've created such a mess for themselves out here um, and they deserve it. Uh, it, it so the, the bottom line, I mean, to, to make a long story short is that, is that, you know, if you're a father and you're going through this and you have, you, you have a woman approach you and report the exact same thing that happened to her as it happened to you, uh, that, that the, the same abuses, uh, prolonging litigation, ignoring evidence, uh, bias, you name it. You, you can't turn them. I mean, in my case, I'm not going to turn them away. And, and they're some of the best advocates because my, some of my female clients, uh, they, some of them were uh, sex, sexually assaulted, sexually battered, uh, psychologically abused, physically abused, and then they're erased from their kids. And so it's the same pattern of abuse. And some of these women are champions at going up against the domestic violence industry, which we're typically fighting in, in the legislative realm, in the lobbying realm. It's usually men's rights versus domestic violence industry, which is propped up by the attorneys. And so when, when you've got people like women coming and saying, wait a second, parental alienation is just another type of mental abuse. It's just another type of psychological abuse. It's no different than pushing me down the stairs. It's no different than punch, punching me in the face. It's the same kind of abuse and that these, and that these courts perpetrate it. You're, you're, you're taking out, you know, you're, you're having a woman as your spokesperson and you're knocking out, uh, undercutting your, your opposition. So I would encourage everyone out there in the men's rights. Now the women aren't so good at reciprocating. Uh, but you know, this is a little bit of a, of, of a dance is to try is to reach out to some of these women and start dialogues around the country and find common cause with them because everyone knows that even though women win about seven out of eight custody cases, that there are fractions of those that, that, there are some women that will be drug addicts. There are some women that will have, uh, you know, whatever, mental, me mental illness where they are not the appropriate custodial parent. We all know that because we're men. men we know that there are plenty capable men that are, that are more than capable of being custodial parents that are not. But we also know that there are women in that, in that one out of eight subset that have been rolled as bad as we have. And that I don't think that they should be ignored. And that, and that, and on top of that, the stigma that they have about being, oh, can you imagine being a woman and losing custody of your children? You must, I mean, just the social stigma, you know. So, so supporting them and cultivating them and making them feel comfortable uh, it, for our long-term legislative efforts for shared parenting legislation. I couldn't I couldn't recommend that enough because we've we've made some progress, at least in the Illinois area of coalescing men and women. Uh, and that goes back to my lobbying days. I, I coalesced business and labor, uh, various seg segments of the economy to take on Chinese trade policies. Unusual coalitions can happen and we can do it. I want to I want to hop in here on this. And uh, you make a good point around we need to have the women involved. And I'll say this. So the state of Arkansas has what, what into, went into effect, I believe, probably about a month ago now, the best mm -hmm. equal and shared parenting bill in the country. Uh, mm -hmm. they, they really, the only thing they didn't get, there are a few little pieces, but essentially people who have already had their cases decided can't go back and utilize the new law. Right. Their lead point person in lobbying legislators was a female. Yeah. So um, I had Brian Vandiver on probably about a month ago now. And he talked about how important that was because she would get different questions than what they got. And she would provide a different perspective. And she was able to hit on different things than if it was just men going on in there. And you, you, you could probably get a handful of more legislators to hop on board 
if they realize this isn't just angry dads. 